Alright guys, we're going to do a quick rundown of the uh, baits that I used on the Harris chain to finish tied for 40th. Missed the, missed the last check because I lost the tiebreaker. Still a little bitter about that, but it's okay. So I, I just wanted to go over the baits uh, that I caught my fish on, explain a little bit how I was using them, and hopefully it'll help you guys catch a few fish if you're in similar situations. So. My main baits going into this event were a Berkeley War Pig and really any any form of uh, shad colors. The water had a lot of like milkiness and LJ bloom to it, so I wanted something that was uh, opaque and just had you know a bright white uh, color to it. You can see this one's this one's really uh, beaten up pretty good. It's a, I was not throwing this in a normal lipless crankbait style. I was throwing it out, letting it hit the bottom and then yo-yoing it back. It's a technique I like to do on the shell beds and it's one that uh, gives the fish a good opportunity to hit the bait when it is a little dirtier water because it's not moving a whole lot. Yes, I'm, I'm stroking it, getting a good reaction strike out of it or a good reaction out of the bait, but the fish you know, are, have the chance when the bait's going up and coming back down. It really is not pulling the bait out of that strike zone quickly. I was pairing that up with a custom rod. It's an uh, HM MB873 by uh, Mudhole, and uh, MHX is the blank. You can get it through Mudhole. And I was throwing it with a Revo ALF high speed reel just because I wanted something to pick up the line. When you are ripping that bait off the bottom, you want something that can pick up the line quickly so that you can set the hook. This was definitely one of my go-to baits, uh, specifically on the shell beds. Also on the shell beds, I was throwing the, the Berkley Dredger 14.5. This bait was running the perfect depth because most of the shell bars are in roughly 10 to 12 foot. So I was getting this down uh, to the bottom and I was not really digging through the, the bottom uh, immensely it was kind of running that perfect depth if you if you picked a crankbait that ran too deep you would really stir up that bottom and get a lot of that silt that was down there from all the dying off weed I was throwing it on an MHX CB 907 uh, blend rod it's a really good crankbait rod really good for chatterbaits as well and then I was pairing it up with an MGX Abu Garcia Revo reel again it was a high-speed reel uh, I just wanted something that I was able to get down there quick and then kind of pick up the line if I needed to after a fish strike. Because a lot of them would hit it and they'd come straight at you or come up and, and jump at the surface immediately. So I just wanted to make sure I was keeping tension on them. The last thing that I was throwing out on the shell bars was a Berkeley wind-up worm. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a speed worm style bait only. It's got a... a little boot tail on the back. I was throwing it out there and letting it go to the bottom and then I was kind of just giving it small strokes, kind of popping it along the bottom. And that's really what I got most of my bites on in practice. I did not catch many fish on it in the tournament, but it's a really, a really good bait for covering water and it's a really good bait for throwing if you're around weeds as well. And, and some of the shell bars had some weeds scattered around it. So it was a good bait to kind of be able to work cleanly through that uh, into the shell bar and then back into the weeds. In this case, I was throwing it on an, another custom built rod, an MHX uh, HMMB874. This is the same blank as the previous uh, one that I was throwing the uh, war pig on, only it's one power stronger, so it's a little bit better for um, throwing more uh, Texas rig type baits that are that don't have the exposed hooks. And then when I was uh, fishing the bridge the first day I caught a couple of fish on a chatterbait with a Berkeley 3.5 the deal on the back I like the smaller profile because it allowed me to get the bait to the bottom I, I started in practice with the four and a half inch uh, deal on the back but it just wanted to rise the bait too much and I wanted to keep that bait down so I went with the smaller the deal 
This just seemed to get good reaction strikes around the bridge. The bridge didn't pay off all that well. I got two nice fish on it, but I spent way too much time fishing that. Uh, to get my limit each day, I would move into the hay grass. And when I was in the hay grass, I kind of had a one-two punch. I was flipping a Berkeley five inch general in either June bug or uh, black with blue flake into any holes that I could find. That was, there were a lot of, of, of spawning males that were up in those holes or fry guarding males. It was an easy way to catch a limit, but most of those fish were a pound and a half or smaller. So it was something that I didn't really want to spend much time doing. In hindsight, the first day I weighed a, a one pound, two ounce fish. Had I gone to the hay grass, I probably called, could have called it up for, you know, a couple ounces pretty quickly, uh, which would have broken the tiebreaker and gotten me paid. But you don't know that, and I'm not fishing the opens for points. I'm fishing the opens to move up to the elites, and in that case, one or two ounces aren't gonna aren't gonna get me there. I needed to call up by pounds, so I was fishing for for what I thought were bigger fish. Uh, the last bait that I would throw in some of the bigger open areas amongst the hay grass was a dirty jigs swim jig with a four and a half inch the deal on the back. The first couple days of practice there was definitely a shad spawn going on uh, which is why I'm throwing a white one. We did get cooler weather during the tournament which killed the shad spawn deal but I was still able to get bites on the on the white swim jig during the tournament. Again, I'm throwing that with a uh, Abu Garcia Revo MGX high-speed reel. And this again was on the MHX MB873 rod. This one I did have a uh, braided line, 40 pound X5 braided line on. Um, that's just a matter of be throwing around that heavier stuff and the watercolor being a little bit off. I usually like to throw my swim jigs on straight fluorocarbon but being down in florida around that heavy cover i chose to go with the braid everything else that i went through here i had on either 15 pound or 17 pound berkeley 100 percent fluorocarbon uh, i just feel like you do get more bites on fluorocarbon and it, it doesn't you know it, in none of those instances did i feel like i needed to go with heavier line you know if you're fishing the shell bars you're you're pretty much out in open water and there's nothing to worry about in terms of breaking the fish off but those were my baits uh you know overall it was a decent finish finishing 41st out of 223 boats is not bad i would have liked to have gotten paid out of it but uh the points are good enough where i still have an outside shot if i outperform in the last two tournaments of the year for the southern opens uh, so we'll see how those go. That, uh, we've got Douglas Lake, I believe, in May, and then the last one is on Lake Norman in September. So uh, I'm prepping now. I'm going to cut all these off. I'm going to tie on new stuff for Smith Lake. Sitting here looking out over the lake we just got at the house. So I need to get back to rigging. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy the channel, please like it. Subscribe if you have not already, and leave any comments if uh, you've got anything to, to add to the video. Thanks for watching, guys.